So most people fail dropshipping. And as a fact, they will most likely even lose more money than they had prior when they started. And that's just because of three simple reasons. That's exactly what I'll elaborate on in this video, completely unfiltered sharing what I think are the main reasons why most people fail. At least from what I've seen by working with people, by doing it myself over the past four years. So with that, I will just lay down the three things, starting with the first one, why most people fail and lose out on making a lot of money with it because it's possible. But the first thing that people basically fail at, you know, to, in order to make money with dropshipping is just basically the store and market that they are using. People are willing to start in, let's say, the market where all the big fishes are, right? Think about, for example, the US, think about Canada, think about, let's say, the big five, UK, US, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, right? If you're going to start as a beginner and you're going to operate in those countries, you make it yourself super, super hard and difficult because you have the most competition there. If you're going to basically locate yourself in a market or in a country where maybe you're located in as well, but the market is super, super hard to compete in even more as let's say a beginning dropshipper, then you're going to see very, very high ad costs, which will most likely be higher than the budget that you wanted to allocate towards this business from the beginning. And that's something you can literally prevent by just separating yourself from those markets, super simple, and basically use the same products from those markets, but then just in other countries. So besides the market that you're focusing on, I see a lot of gurus as well online talking about, you know, you should open up a one product store because you know, that's only, that's the only thing that's working right now, you know, focusing on the brand and those gurus are most likely located in a market where you don't want to be operating in, right? Because the entry bar barrier is too high. So it could actually be true what they're saying that in the US, one product stores right now work the best. It could be actually true. But my point is that if you're operating, let's say in a market outside of the US, general stores and niche stores are working the very best in your way to go. Because in the beginning, you want to be one specific thing, and that is be flexible. If you're not flexible, and what I mean by that is actually testing products every single day, because we don't need to buy in any stock, right? That is drop shipping. We are just a middleman. Then you're basically allowing yourself to, to fail when you don't do it, because you don't know what is working. And if you're going to create a one product store, with a product that you don't even know if it's actually going to work out for you, that is just insanity because you don't know if it's working. Why would you spend up so much time and even money to create and store it with the branded feeling and everything for one specific product instead of allowing yourself to test a bunch of products and to be very flexible and that way also be able to see what works for you and for the customers that you're basically targeting, right? So. One product stores, as a fact, I don't believe in it to start with right from the beginning because you don't know most likely what is working. As a fact, I run myself only a general store right now in Germany in a fashion niche, right? So what that allows me to do is to test, let's say, seasonal products and sometimes even evergreen fashion products during the entire year or during a specific season. But I'm actually able and flexible as I can test all products related to fashion that I see and do product research on right? And this allows me to not buy any in any stock, to test everything that I want to test without even spending a single dollar for those products up front, because we pay as we go, the customers pays us, and we pay basically the supplier to ship out that product from the supply directly to the customer's door. That's it. So if you're going to allocate everything directly to a one product store with a product that you don't know if it's working, then you're actually cutting yourself in your own fingers. So I strongly believe that one product store are the worst type of store that you can start from the beginning if you don't know what you're doing, okay? That's basically about the store that you're using. Second, product research. I see people using tools right from the beginning that are maybe costing 50 to hundreds of dollars per month. As a fact, I don't use and have basically never used a paid tool that is actually um, basically allowing me to just find winning products without even paying a single dollar for those product research tools that I use. And it's as a fact, the best product research tool that you can use because I only use the Facebook ad library. It's completely free from Facebook and allows me to track every single ad from the competitor 
um, that I want to use in a different market to use myself, right? How I do that, I also created a video of it, which I will list in the description that you can look at in order to find winning products alongside me. But more importantly, not the products that I find, but how I actually filter out those products, right? How I actually look at products and what decisions I make based on the criteria that I'm searching for. So to, to actually elaborate on the actual products that you're using, of course, correlated to that is the actual Facebook ads, right? Organic ads are super slow. They work, but in the beginning, you want to see at least what I wanted to see the results quick. And how you do that is to not focus on organic from the beginning because it's super slow. You will slow your own progress. And what you want to do is, like I said, you want to be flexible. You want to work with products that are working in other markets so you can transition those markets to your market where you're operating in, right? Because that's already working. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. And then with that, with the right Facebook ads, I think it's super important that you're also going to use paid ads because that way you're actually buying data. With the data, you will be able to make quicker decisions and success, love, speed. Okay, that's super important. Lastly, your offer. If you're not having the right offer, so you can have, let's say, everything in place. You have the right Facebook ad creatives that are actually tracking customers to your store, right? You have your store in place, but your offer for that product that you're using that you also search on is maybe a good product and the offer is lacking, then you have one piece of the chain that is missing in order to have that sale from the basically customer that you're focusing on. So your specific offer that you're using is more important than you think. This can still make or break your product. So all these parts should be in place in order to make the chain work, right? So your offer should not be having like a 10, 20 or 30% discount. As a fact, I always use 50% discounts or a one plus one free offer. People are more basically likely to buy based on the over 2000 products that I've tested with the 50% discount. And I can tell you, I've literally tested everything from 10% discounts to 70% discounts, but 70% discounts can also work the opposite way. So that's something you don't want to do. And you want to basically be in the middle while still having, let's say, to focus on that impulse purchase, because that's what we're focusing on. We want to actually engage with the customers on Facebook. They click through to your website and on that website that you're having, boom, they need to make the purchase immediately as an impulse purchase. And that's what you do with an irresistible offer, a good looking product page, of course, but I can tell the offer is more important than having a very good product page because I see people crushing it with a very shitty page. And that's just because they have actually something that is an irresistible offer, how we call it, in order to make the purchase directly and not, let's say, later down the line, okay? so. Use what's working for your competitor. Uh, try to look how you can improve upon it to make it better. And that way you're actually separating yourself from most of the people who are not willing to do that extra step to go that extra mile in order to see a good product become a great product. Okay. So Picasso once said, good artists copy and great artists steal. Literally, I use all the products that I found from competitors in other markets. I steal those products and I use them in my market, right? So this is simply how I do it and um, how I would suggest you as a beginner to do it as well, to see quicker success, but to also prevent on, for example, creating that one product store or let's say what I've talked about, right? So I hope this was valuable. It was a short video. I hope it was valuable to you. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. I would highly appreciate that and I can make more videos like this if you like it. And now from there, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. This was Carlos. Peace.